Welcome back to the 20 and 20 take two in the ninth Iran Ismont of Paris. My name is Jay Swanson. This is Paris in my pockets. Run through all 20 Iran Ismonts to tell you five of my favorite things in each. And behind me is one of my favorite things, Timothy Chalamet. It's not why we're here, actually. It's for the opera originally, but we'll get to that later. The ninth Iran Ismont is one of my favorites because it goes from the risque to the ritzy. It goes from this glamorous section all the way up to kind of a dirtier area of town, but a dirty area in a fun way. Whether you're looking for a drink, something to eat, good coffee, or just a stroll through some interesting neighborhoods that are beautiful, eclectic in their shops, or wonderful in general, you come to the right place. The ninth Iran Ismont is one of the most popular places to hang out if you are from Paris for a reason. It's a wonderful freaking place. I love it to death. And we're gonna conquer it today. Make sure you go to parismypocket.com, grab my guide if you want all the recommendations that I would make for this run this month and all the ones around it in the whole city. You can just get ahead of the game by going there right now. And if you just wanna get the ones I'm gonna give you today, well, I've got some good ones for you. Let's go. It can't all be new places to discover as we go along. We gotta go back to some OGs and there's nothing more OG than KB. KB Coffee is one of the oldest coffee roasters in Paris as far as the new wave is concerned and one of the best. And this coffee shop itself, while being perfectly located if you're going to Montmartre or you're wandering into the ninth, as you should do here in Pigalle, it's the busiest coffee shop in Paris. Like the number of people that they serve every day is insane. It's very, very high. There's a lot of opportunity to meet people just sitting out on the terrace or while you're here in the interior, the coffee is delicious, they're one of my favorite roasters, and the food is tasty. You may even remember that we adopted them during the Adopt-A-Coffee Shop during the pandemic when we were trying to support some local coffee shops and help them stay afloat when we didn't know if anyone was gonna survive. So KB and their uh, extension, Back in Black, where they do all their roasting, which is in the 11th. We kind of skipped it this time, but I figured we'd come here this time. They're really good. You should check out their other location, Back in Black, in the 11th. It is also massive and a really great spot to go meet somebody, have a nice time, and then wander into the Bastille. But for now, we're here in the ninth, getting our coffee fixed before we wander through the, the ninth, getting redundant here. They're old friends, highly recommended. I've been recommending them for years. You'll find them in my guide. You've always found them in my guide. KB Coffee, keeping me alive for all these years. I actually first came to KB in 2014 on a layover when I was living in the Congo. I had some friends that brought me here, and this was before I really drank coffee. I was just getting into it and I needed sugar in it and chocolate and whatever else. And so friends that brought me here and I actually have a photo that I might dig up. It's way deep on my Instagram back when I was doing a photo of the day. But the, one of the things that really stood out to me when you sit on the patio, for one, it gets sun in the afternoon, which can be really, really nice. Around one o'clock, depending on what season, what time in the season it is. What time in the season, what season of the year, what time of the year, what season it is. I'm gonna need more coffee. But it has a really nice quaint view of uh, the top of Sacre Coeur that's really nicely framed by the buildings going up the street from here. Some of the best views of Sacre Coeur are from down in this neighborhood. If you just take a walk a few streets in and uh, see what you find. The buildings end up framing it really nicely. With that, I think we should probably, you know, wander, let's, 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 uh, lunch? Okay, I had a really hard time choosing where to go for lunch today. I was like, my favorite Indian restaurant is in this neighborhood. That pizza place that I told you about in the 20th that we failed to go to, they have another location they recently opened here. Also very good. Pigal is, is a magical place. Now, you might notice from like behind me, it's also got some seedier elements to it. The GIs in World War II referred to it as Pig Alley because it's where all the sex shops and everything are located, which are partially in the 9th, partially in the 18th. Definitely has a little bit of a reputation for being a little bit on the seedier side, like I was saying, but it also has some really good nightlife. Great bars, great restaurants. We're gonna go to a French restaurant tonight. There's been a lack of French restaurants in this series so far. We're gonna make up for that, don't you worry. But honestly, this neighborhood is one of my favorites. Not only is there great coffee, great food, great nightlife, just so much to do, but there's a lot of really fun little shops, wine cellars, music stores, like tons of music stores in this area. If you're looking to pick up a guitar or something else, I just love this neighborhood so much. So now the thing is I decided to go to Dumbo, one of my favorite smash burgers in town. Are they my favorite? I, there's a stiff competition between them and one other that didn't get mentioned actually in this series. This is the first time I've gone for a burger as we've gone. The thing is, okay, so Dumbo is a really good spot for a smash burger, but it has two major drawbacks. 
One, there's often an insanely long line, which is why they, on the backs of their shirts, it says until sold out, because they used to basically just run out and they wouldn't be able to serve everyone. They've had to set a limit to about 300 to 350 burgers in a day, and then they're just, they're just done. So sometimes there's a really long wait to get your burger. The second is that there's nowhere to sit. They did used to have some seating inside. I think COVID killed that. And then they, they redid it to just be a window. So now if you want to get a burger, you get it to go. It is very, very good though. If you like a good smash burger and you want to see how the Parisians are doing it, this is your chance to do it. The other thing to do would be to watch out because Dumbo does do pop-ups all over the city in at events in uh, random parks. I don't know, you just might see them. So if you ever see Dumbo and you smell cheeseburgers, go for it. What I've done is I've come just up the street to this little circle here. It is in Pigua, like Pigalle Square, I guess, You're, or like Place Pigalle. It is a little bit dingy and it, it, you get what you get, but with the trees here, you get a little bit of shade. Hopefully the fountain turns on in the not too distant future. You can sit, have your burger, and then carry on to explore wherever you're going, whether that's up the hill into Montmartre or down the hill towards Opera. We, we can go to Opera after this. I'll explain to you why I wouldn't necessarily spend a ton of time down there, even though there is some good stuff down there. The food, the drink, the good experience when it comes to the eating is all up here, and that's why we're gonna be coming back up here for dinner. But we can earn it by walking down the hill and you know, enjoying the opera for a second. Anyway, you've seen burgers. You know what a burger looks like, but they really, really hammered this down. They smashed it. They literally, like the smashing process of the smash burger. Ketchup, mustard, pickles, two patties, two slices of cheese, all smashed together on this deliciously fluffy bun. Oh, that hits the spot. This is a good choice. I love this place. I made a good choice for today. Mm. The fries are really good too. I have to not to get the fries because too much. I've been eating too many fries lately, but let's go check out the opera. Trinity is one of my favorite churches in the city. Maybe top five, definitely top 10, but unfortunately it's been under scaffolding since the last time I did a 20 and 20. We haven't seen the outside of this thing in a long time. You can see the inside in that old video, that last one, but I was just gonna say, just cause the outside is still, unfortunately, a little difficult to appreciate with their like, artistic rendition on the scaffolding. That doesn't mean that the park in front isn't worth a visit. And while I wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to come to this park, it is a great spot for your Dumbo burger if you're looking for a place to sit that's a little nicer than the curb of a dirty fountain in a famously dirty district. Anyways, Trinity's not a bad option and it's a downhill walk from there. So, you know, bonus points. Also, if you're curious about where this is, you're gonna have to wait, but you don't have to wait for today's patron producer, Roy Ellenberg. Thanks for Roy for sending me out here. To all my patrons for making this possible, genuinely. I wouldn't be able to go out and drinking beer and sharing the good spots if it wasn't for my patrons who've been with me for so long. Roy's been with me for like three, three, four years? For a while. Thanks, Roy. Thanks to all of you, the rest of you, for being here. And uh, we'll get to this in a little bit. I'm already almost halfway through it. The Opera. Palais Garnier, one of my absolute favorite buildings in the entire city of Paris because it's gorgeous and substantial. I would say that Versailles to me feels kind of empty, right? Kind of ugh. And this place is the opposite, which is why I would say skip Versailles, don't go to Versailles. Like it's a waste of a day unless you're really into it or you want to do the gardens, like the gardens in Versailles, phenomenal. You're going to do like a bike tour or something like that. Stay outside the palace. If you want to go into a palace, you can get a tour. You can wander around with a group or by yourself or you can buy cheap seats at the last minute, get yourself into a show. You won't have the best view, but you will be able to see the opera. You'll be able to tell your friends, I went to the opera in Paris. And at the same time, you get to wander around inside. Like you get to see a whole variety of things that you wouldn't get to see otherwise, including the wooden balconies. And you can walk outside. I stumbled on that on accident the first time I was here. Literally, at least usually the doors are open and you can walk outside onto the balcony. Maybe not right now with all the scaffolding. The scaffolding is definitely ruining everything, but they're getting it ready for the Olympics. It should be ready by 2024. And if you'd like to see, you know, what it looks like without all the scaffolding, I've got other videos on it. Go check those out right now. Or there's a picture of what it looks like in my guide at parismypocket.com. Of course, instead of buying my guide to see a picture of this, you can just Google it, but you know what I mean. It's, it, 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 my, it, my guide's worth it. The 1745 opens at 1745, but that's not where the name comes from, despite the fact that that would be really fun and clever. It comes from the fact that the first was in uh, the 17th Arani's Mount and 45 was the number on their address, which is just a habit that they have here of naming restaurants and all kinds of businesses after their address. I don't know if that's more helpful or just not. Anyways, I have a problem with it. We can talk about it another time. This food is really good and there's no problem with that. If you want to have like a really good charcuterie board that you make yourself, where you get to choose some really nice high quality ingredients, make it together, put it together, 
it's gonna ruin charcuterie boards for you for the rest of your time while you're in France because not only is this really good quality, but you do have some control over it. And then you go back to eating the regular bistro charcuterie board and you'd be like, what is this lunch meat? Why did they, did they just go to the local fan prix and make, no, this comes from like the local farm. That, that duck died yesterday and got turned into saucy song. I'm just kidding, I'm saying that. It's not that fresh. That'd be kind of gross, it needs to cure. How's the duck saucy song? Gamey. Quackerific. I'm not gonna quack. <laughs> not gonna quack on camera. We got like a truffle gouda, a 16 month Conte, or is that the Beaufort? I think we got the Beaufort. The terrine looks amazing. And you can get like a nice little accompaniment, like uh, a little uh, fig jam, some cornichon. There's a lot of different options. They've got a book so you can go through and read about it. They've got some translations so you can see it in English if you need to. And then after you've made your little blanche, you can see how well you did at arranging your own. They do have pre-made ones that they've assembled for you in advance as far as like the actual concept so that you can, you know, if you don't trust yourself to make your own charcuterie board, they'll get it done for you. And then you can sit out here next to this nice pedestrian zone. I was gonna say zone piaton. They've blocked off this street so the cars aren't going by, just people. Cars are going by over there, but not right here. So you can sit out on their little terrace or you can sit inside, tons of space inside, really nice, warm, leathery vibes. And if it's full upstairs, they might have room downstairs for you as well uh, for large parties or small parties like ours. That is an interesting glass of wine. Honestly, Burgund, always the way to go. Always the best. I mean, I, I had, there were two that I thought looked interesting, but the Burgundy is where it's at. In my very nascent wine knowledge, don't take any advice from me, what am I saying? In the shadow of Moulin Rouge, just down the street, you'll find Demery, well it's not Demery's bar, but they're very closely associated, the Intrepid. It's, it's like mostly Demery beer here. A local Parisian brewery just outside of town. We still call it Parisian, well, let's own it. I mean, let's be honest. The Intrepid is a really nice little spot to come get a craft beer not far from the action in Pigalle and Blanche. If you're just walking along these neighborhoods, you're gonna find yourself with a lot of crappy options for beer. And if you want a good option for beer, this is one of them. There are actually a lot of really good options for beer up here. In my guide, they're probably just like four within a stone's, a stone's throw of here. So I might be overselling how much bad beer there is around here, but it is Paris. You're more likely to land in bad beer than you are in good beer if you fall off of a horse. So one, maybe don't ride a horse in Paris. Two, if you are gonna ride a horse, make sure that you ride it very close to a bar like the Intrepid. Whether you're going to a, a show or you're just wandering around and it's hot and you're looking for a cold drink, this is not a bad place to go. The staff are very friendly. They are very closely related to the brewery, even though that they're not directly associated, they're very closely associated. I have it on decent authority. And uh, honestly, just a great spot to meet some friends, sit at the bar, or take the one table that's outside and stand around and see how the world passes you by as the Moulin spins in the background. <sighs> French food, French beer. It's turning into quite the French evening here. Do you speak French? A little bit of French? I made a video about that too, if you want to watch a video on how to speak a little bit of French, but uh, mm. speaking of French, I was gonna mention in the video on the 10th, and I didn't, because uh, Antoine from Les Frenchies was born in the 10th, and he's actually gonna join me for a little wander, and the timing just didn't work out. But if you're looking for more tips and tricks, on how to get around Paris and make the most of your time. It's another really good YouTube channel that you can watch. They're very friendly, I've met them, they're nice. And uh, you might see them in a video someday in the future, but in the interim, you can go check them out and uh, further and advance your planning strategies and skills with them. They're a good one that I found recently. I feel like there's another one that I, we'll, we'll get to that another time. Just check out the Frenchies, they're pretty cool. Anyways, that brings us to the end of the 9th. You can see the 18th just behind me with Moulin Rouge, but of course, the ninth is where it's at, especially the top half. Although when I was exploring a little bit earlier, I did see some things I would love to try down near Opera. And I didn't mention the free views, some really nice free views of the city and the opera itself, which you can see in a video that I made before, like five free views to Paris. Just look it up. You'll find some really good stuff, famous stuff, good stuff. But the ninth is really where it's at. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed this. Thanks to my patrons for making this possible. Thanks to you for watching. You make it possible, whether you're a patron, you watch these, or you go to parismypocket.com, grab my guide, get all the information you need to have the best time in Paris. It's all thanks to you. Ooh, to thank you. That, ooh, that's thanks to Demery. This, this is good, it's tasty.